a review copy was provided. Hello everyone, my name is Adam Siddiqui, I'm the managing editor for newfeed.com and today I am talking about Bright Memory Infinite. This is from FYQD Studio and partly published by Playism. So what is Bright Memory Infinite? Well, it stars a super soldier, at least I think she's a super soldier based on everything we're going to talk about, called Shelia, who is sent to observe an abnormal weather event that turns out to be a giant black hole that is ripping parts of the Earth up. The narrative doesn't attempt to explain much other than what's going right going on right in front of you. Whatever you see is as much information as you're going to get. There are no collectibles to expand on anything and you're just told to stop someone named General Lin and you're being handled by someone named Director Chen of SRO with ancient humans being brought back to life and parts of the planet hovering in the air your job is to stop whatever this is from going any further the finale of the game does try to wrap everything up and it does a pretty good job on it like most 90s action film where this game draws inspiration for the story is mostly just the twine that holds back the real meat of this entire game which is the action gameplay so, Bride Memory Infinite does focus on arena-style first-person combat with sudden light platforming elements. Each area is designed to complement the high-paced style of Shelia's combat style. Using her power unit, Shelia can move faster than bullets and has access to specialized attacks powered through relics found in the environment or by defeating ancient soldiers risen from the dead. Shelia's primary weapons include an arsenal of guns such as an assault rifle, pistol, automatic shotgun, and sniper rifle. Each one has specific attachments that cannot be altered and one unique ammo type that has its own ammo count. They shoot well and the developers did an outstanding job of ensuring the player is in constant control regardless of how fast you're moving or what attacks you're performing. There is never really a situation that calls for one specific weapon over another and the game provides plenty of ammo during each encounter so you're never going to run out unless you're using one weapon over another too much. The assault rifle is perfect for everything but every other weapon has its own strength and weaknesses. Shotguns work uh, when in close range, the sniper rifle is great for long range and so on and so forth so you're not really hindered for whatever weapon you choose to use. Shelia's next primary weapon is her sword. Sword can slice through enemies with ease and destroy heavily armored targets much more efficiently making them vulnerable to other attacks. You can launch enemies into the air, do a fury of slices, deflect enemy bu uh, bullets, or you can parry melee attacks with proper timing. The game is lenient with the window of opportunity, but on harder difficulties you'll need to man master the parry system. This combined with the great selection of guns means making mincemeat of your targets is easy enough but it is recommended that you play on revenge difficulty which is the third hardest option. I played on the standard difficulty and it was really easy for me so I would say playing on the harder difficulties for more veteran players would be ideal especially if you played games like Doom and Quake and Duke Nukem. Now, Bright Memory Infinite does support controller, but it is ideal to play with a mouse and keyboard. I know a lot of people will say, well, this is a PC version you're playing, so of course you will play on mouse and keyboard. It's the best option. But I played the game on both controller and PC to get a feel for both, but there is a technical problem with the controller. Now, I used an Xbox One controller, and I used the Turtle Beach Special Edition controller. And both of these had the same issue, where when I held down the sides for a for the guns, it would often get stuck in that position, requiring me to tap the button twice in order to get out of that position. This is incredibly problematic when you play the games on harder difficulties, where every shot, every movement needs to be calculated, because the game really does punish you if you are not quick on your feet and precise with your shots, as lots of arena shooters are, so this issue should be patched out as soon as possible. Now, relics serve as the game's primary leveling system. You gain access to these when you explore the environment or kill powerful ancient enemies to unlock Shelia's other abilities. Where guns are provided through the game as you naturally progress, most of these skills are gated by these relics. You can power them up to level 3, which gives you access to a lot more powerful versions of these skills, and there are also specialized ammos for the weapons, which can be powered up to level 3 as well. You'll need play. You'll 
need to play through the game twice if you want to unlock everything and there is a new game plus option that allows you to continue to earn progression even if you start the campaign over in the middle of the campaign or any other part of the chapter now if you do start from a specific point the game ends the basically ends the game once you've completed that specific section so you can't continue forward from there in order to play the game from start to finish you'll need to play the game from the start it's all a matter of preference when it comes to the skills and Shelia's godlike abilities does make her incredibly unstoppable but she's still vulnerable to being overwhelmed by the mass amount of enemies of General Lin's army who are pretty much equipped to deal with almost any situation but they're also easy to take off one by one. There's always a trade-off for whatever skill you're using. For example, the rocket punch is very slow to charge, but it does deliver a devastating blow that basically wipes out everything in your way, whereas opposed to the blade, which has a charge to it, can slice through enemies very effectively, but if you use it too much, you'll be vulnerable and won't be able to deflect enemy oncoming attacks, which on harder difficulties you really need to do. Now the shooting and melee combat does encourage fast paced gameplay. She, uh, Shelia's health is tied to a regenerative shield and then a health bar that takes a noticeably long time to charge but you're encouraged to keep moving in order to maintain your I guess godlike mobility. Well the biggest issue with this game despite being an arena style shooter is that weapon reloading can take a while. Now that will be a bit shocking for players who do play uh, arena style shooters because they generally don't have reloading animations unless it's very specific guns that are incredibly overpowered like Doom's super shotgun but the reload animation for this game can be a little too long. Now I get it you can't reload your gun and swing your blade at the same time. Shelia only has two hands but when you have to constantly deal with this long reloading animation it can be incredibly frustrating. I kind of think they should have reduced the length of the reloading animation and this is incredibly annoying after a battle where you have to cycle through your weapons and reload them so if you're trying to speed run the game that is just very annoying to deal with now the developers did attempt to mix up the action by offering a combination of platforming sections and stealth sequences along with one car chase the stealth sequence is it's very tedious. You just have to wait for the enemies to look in the opposite direction and kill them from behind. If you happen to get spotted, you can regain your stealth position. But I ran into this glitch where one enemy just refused to regain, uh, basically to confirm that I regained my stealth position and they would shoot me from behind an invulnerable wall. I'm not sure what was happening here. You take a look and you tell me what this is. But basically all the any other enemies recognized that I regained my stealth position whereas this enemy just kept throwing grenades shooting at me and all this basically strange things that were happening. The other sections are platforming which take up a bulk of the other things you'll be doing outside from killing a large amount of powerful, powerful soldiers. Now this is the only sections that require you to use wall run in because it's not that practical in combat. Unlike games like Titanfall or Call of Duty Black Ops 3 where they mix together wall run in in combat, here it's just too slow to be used in combat and whenever it does come as an opportunity with a flat surface it's just not usable in comparison to dashing. Dashing is just a lot more effective, quicker, and offers more opportunity to dodge oncoming fire as opposed to wall running which is basically just very slow, just and give you a lot of vertical leap because double jumping is a lot more effective. Overall, I mean it's there, but I never really found a use for it outside from the specific platforming sections that required it. The car section is, yeah, it's a car section. You just follow the path, shoot everything in front of you. I mean, they're nice breaks from the arena style combat, but if they were to remove those and just replace them with more arenas, I think the game would have benefited a lot better from it. Now, Shelia is incredibly mobile, and there's a lot of freedom here for you to do whatever you want. There's sliding, dashing, double jumping, and wall running, which I said is completely useless outside from the platforming sections that require it. But mobility is incredibly fast, and there is a charging system applied to some of the mobile options, so you can't just constantly spam dashing or any of these abilities. I did wish that they included like a indicator on the cursor similar to Doom Eternal. I think that is a fantastic system that all 
arena style shooters could implement in order to make it much more effective because you have to look on the lower left hand side of the screen in order to look at these abilities and their charge which i think is very annoying but it, it's just me i prefer having that indicator right in the center and i hope more games will do it now the game isn't free from technical issues. This game was made by a small team, so there were some problems. For example, text appearing on screen during specific sections that wouldn't disappear. Like I said, the stealth section where this NPC would just not recognize my stealth... Uh, my... Uh, what would you call this? I regained stealth and it just didn't recognize it. NPCs would often just yell things at me when uh, they were clearly dead. You know, small things. It wasn't that problematic and they rarely happened. But they're here and there and, you know, it, they do get a pass. Especially after comparing games like GTA Definitive Edition, Cyberpunk 2077. I get those games are much larger than this game in so many ways. Like, compared to those titles, this would be incredibly shallow like a puddle. Whereas those games are more like oceans. Either way... I mean, there's small technical issues, they're not that big of a deal. But in terms of presentation, which is probably the most striking element of Bright Memory Infinite, it has that AAA quality. The constant flurry of rain combined with the fast-paced action, the incredible music, and the constant stream of different enemies placed in unique environmental situations, it's really well done. The boss fights in, in particular are absolutely incredible. There are only about three fights with two of them being repeats and the final boss having multiple stages so technically four if you count that one of the boss fights are a repeat of two times but either way those boss fights were absolutely incredible affairs and they were fantastic they were definitely the icing on this incredible cake and yeah i really enjoyed it now let's talk about the elephant in the room um the pricing model this game is expensive at $20. There's also paid DLC, which I'm not a fan of. But, you know, considering that, again, it's a small team, I will give it a pass here. But the game can be completed in about uh, an hour and a half. During my first playthrough, I completed the game in an hour and 50 minutes. And during my second playthrough, an hour and 30 minutes because I had all my upgrades. So I plowed through everything very efficiently. So the game is incredibly short for 20 bucks. Now... I think it's worth it at 20 bucks because this game is meant to be played over and over again. After you complete the game, you're given a score based on your performance, how many times you died, and the speed at which you completed the game. So it definitely has that Devil May Cry aspect. I wish they included a rating system as you play through the game during each combat situation. But I guess uh, it, they just didn't have the time or couldn't balance that out. But either way, this game is meant to re be replayed over and over again. So... I mean, in comparison, if I were to choose this game over Call of Duty Vanguard, I would choose this game over that title because this was a unique and much more pleasurable experience in comparison to Vanguard, which was just the same generic thing over and over again, just in, you know, new Call of Duty game, uh, same generic thing you might expect. But here, yeah, I would rather pay 20 bucks for this game over $60 for that uh, generic I know what I'm going to get product. So the presentation is definitely there when it comes to AAA quality and it just looks absolutely stunning. In terms of the character models, they are really well done. And yeah, the the main protagonist, Shelia, is a cool protagonist. She is very uh, emotionless when it comes to the cutscenes. Her character model doesn't express any type of emotion. She just has that same stilted look. The voice acting in particular is very well done. I will compliment that the voice actors gave it their all and it definitely shows. They had a lot of passion for this project. And yeah, they deserve a round of applause. They did a fantastic jo job. Shelia was fantastically voiced and so was every character in this game. So in terms of that, yeah, they did a really good job. Now, you can't skip the tutorials. That is a problem. You will have to replay the game from start to finish and still have to do the tutorials. You can't skip cutscenes, so if you're going to speedrun the game, you're going to have to endure the cutscenes. I pressed every button on my keyboard, and I couldn't do that for some reason. I don't know why. There's no optional game modes, unfortunately, so no endless horde mode, which this game would have benefited greatly from. There's no challenge rooms, no arena-based combat to test your skills. 
which again would have benefited greatly from this title. So the only thing you can really replay is the single player campaign. And the unlockables for completing the game on the hardest difficulties range from cosmetic options, basically new gun skins, new sword skins, and there are some skins for Shiala. Uh, Shelia, I don't know why I keep calling her Shiala, it's Shelia. Now, it's clear that the developers knew that the character was going to be almost like a meme. She's this hot, very cool, sexy cyber ninja. Well, she's not cybernetic, but you know where I'm coming from. She's supposed to be this anime protagonist waifu character. So some of the costumes, as you can see here, do showcase, you know, her in some scantily clad outfits. It's, a, it's basically a joke in a lot of ways. It just wants to give you that 90s vibe, just like what a guy would be this jacked, unrealistically buff guy like Sylvester Stallone if they had, I guess, a male character. But I like Shelia. She was, you know, just a badass 90s character that really showcased what they were going for. It complements the atmosphere. So I'm sure the developers were just like, you know what, just put some sexy schoolgirl outfits there. So yeah. There's Bright Memory Infinite. It's a really good arena-based shooter. I do hope that they continue to make something as incredible as this in the future. They definitely have a lot of talent here. And the fact that this was their first game, they really did a fantastic job. I would say, you know, remove the reloading elements in this game and implement them more. Just give them a huge clip and allow them to go balls out with the guns. Uh, maybe uh, add some optional challenge rooms and you know no more stealth sequence uh, sequences anymore because those were just that's the entire sequence the game could have done without but either way the game is good it's fun I had a great time it's meant to be replayed over and over game has a lot of value in terms of arena based combat and if you like those types of games you're going to enjoy that that's the last thing I want to end this game uh, this review on if you like arena based shooters this is going to be the game for you. This game doesn't try to be more than it is, and I think more games should do that. If you're trying to hit a specific audience, go for that audience, and don't try to just, you know, put everything you can to appeal to everyone. This game really appeals to one specific type of audience, and it shows for it. The presentation is great, the combat is fantastic, the story is just there to push you forward, and there's it's the wrapping paper in this incredible present. So yeah, great game. Highly recommend it. For $20, it's worth it. So tell me what you think about Bright Memory Infinite. If you played the game, if you intend to get it, if this review changed your mind or whether you want to get it or probably convinced you not to get it. I like to get feedback in any way I can. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. Check out noobfeed.com for the written review. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for joining me. Stay awesome, everyone.